I'm joined now by the uh, by Andy Hunter from the Ukrainian Institute here in London. None of that uh, obviously confirmed in any shape or form, but interesting stuff. Donetsk and Luhansk, people's republics, uh, demilitarized zones and uh, UN uh, peacekeepers um, keeping uh, the peace there. How do you think that would go down? Well, I think it's going back really to the essence of the conflict, starting from uh, February 2014, from March 2014, when Russian troops appeared on, in Crimea, and now we're seeing the invasion in uh, Donetsk and Luhansk. So I think now the question is, it's very important to understand this is an invasion. This is an invasion of an independent, sovereign uh, state in 21st century Europe. So now if we're talking about, um, the, the question is, the number one issue still remains Ukraine's territory integrity and sovereignty because Russia can tomorrow go into another state occupy a part of this uh, land and then say well you know let, let, let's do it to get, put together a peace plan mm. and think so I think the number one issue remains and what uh, pres uh, sort of uh, Kerry was saying today in uh, Kiev um, it's about Ukraine's territorial integrity and uh, sovereignty and I think the issue now is about you know whether or not to provide arms to Ukraine. Mm. Uh, Twenty years ago, in uh, 1991, when Ukraine uh, proclaimed independence, it had the third largest nuclear arsenal in the world, mm. bigger than that of China, France, United Kingdom combined at the time, and it gave it up voluntarily. It gave it up more than 1,500 nuclear uh, missiles. And now the question is that then it gave it up in exchange for assurances from the United States, from the United Kingdom, and from Russia that its territory, integrity, and sovereignty will be preserved. Mm. You know, then it gave away these missiles. And now what it's asking for is to ask, you know, to have some sort sure. of um, defense to defend it, its land. So where we are tonight then is uh, uh, Francois Hollande and uh, Angela Merkel are saying no uh, to weapons. But of course, uh, we've been hearing over the past couple of days that uh, the White House is, in inverted commas, considered it. But surely no one would want uh, to go that far. It would be a bridge too far because then what we get uh, is into uh, a proxy war between uh, Russia and the, and the West and really. Yeah. No one would want a war in 21st mm. century Europe. Mm. But because of Russia's invasion in Ukraine, we've seen already 5,000 Ukrainians, 5,000 people killed. Mm. Um, it's the uh, invasion continues. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? I mean, do you allow Russia to kill another 5,000 people or possibly more? Or do you allow a sovereign independent mm -hmm. state to defend itself? Is this the only thing that uh, President Putin would understand? OK, there's a kind of saber rattling going on just now. But uh, a saber rattling that may well be effective because if America does hand over weapons, it really changes the whole complexion of things. It's, you know, what will stop uh, Vladimir Putin now? I mean, sanctions, you know, they have had an effect, but they're not working. So wh where does one stop? Um, you know, and this is seeing uh, his aggressive attitude. Um, but um, some people are saying the only way to stand up against uh, an aggressor that's using arms, invading country, is to st uh, stand up against mm -hmm. him with, with arms. It's very interesting to see what uh, or hear what Dmitry was saying there. I mean, I hadn't got that far in all of this because I thought that the plan um, from Putin and the, the, the separatists was to have that so-called new Russia and that uh, it would involve uh, the whole of the East there with Luhansk and Donetsk and then there would be some kind of supply corridor going from those two uh, major cities right down through Mariupol uh, to supply Crimea. So part of that idea seems to have gone now. Yeah, I think the whole sort of idea that uh, there was the plan was in the Kremlin to have a sort of a, a Novorossiya, mm. uh, all going all the way down through mm. uh, Zaporozhye, through Kherson, down mm -hmm. to Odessa, and sort of uh, providing access to Crimea. Mm. But what Ukrainians showed, Ukraine does not want, Ukrainians do not want to be under Vladimir Putin. Ukrainians have made a choice. They want to be part of a European, uh, mm. sort of European family based on European values, freedom of speech, human dignity, mm. and ba based on European values. Mm not uh, something of a Soviet, sort of Russian, um, KGB-style um, mm. uh, government. Mm. So I think that's very important to understand. So the whole plan of Novorossiya is a failure. It hasn't worked. Where the pockets of violence that is being constantly um, further uh, armed by the Kremlin, by Vladimir Putin, providing arms, providing soldiers to in Donetsk and in Luhansk, that, that's really ignited. We're seeing um, the, uh, the propaganda. It's working. It's like George Orwell, two minutes of hate every day. 
I mean, Russian television, it's a broadcast every day, this hatred, mm. and it incites ethnic hatred against Ukrainians, and the people, they watch it, and they believe it. I mean, showing a, a three-year-old child being crucified on billboards, and I mean, this, this is just purely the propaganda that, that it's you know, broadcasting on a daily basis is having its effect. But I think uh, very soon people will see through it. You know, we're seeing the, uh, as your correspondent said, you know, Putin's uh, popularity will start to fall. The oligarchs, the Russian oligarchs that have been hit, they're losing a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I think the cracks will appear very, very soon. And then uh, people will ask Vladimir Putin, why? Why, why did he invade Crimea? Why did he inv invade uh, Luhansk and Donetsk and so you know what next very important meeting uh, tomorrow Andy Hunter uh, in Moscow obviously between uh, Angela Merkel uh, Francois Hollande and Mr. Putin we'll just have to wait to see what transpires there but thank you indeed for your time tonight